Hello everyone, Basic Ollie here, hope you're all doing well and welcome back to another GT Sport video. Today I have round four of the Nations Cup for you around Suzuka. The only issue we have here is group three and I have no idea what car to pick. So when it came to this I thought there's only one man we can really ask. And it's going to be this man here. So I made sure I joined his live stream and I asked him the question. I said, I've only got one entry. Yeah, For my iRacing Endurance race, what car can I pick? We were ahead of Nick at one point. What are you picking? Uh, I think you should pick uh, the Yeetle. <laughs> so the Yeetle it is, ladies and gentlemen. That's exactly what we have decided to go in. The man, the myth, the legend that is Tijdi has spoken. And when he speaks, you listen. So that's exactly what I have done. Unfortunately, this track has been absolutely dominated by the Nissan GTR. And the Yeetle is quite a bit slower than the GTR around here, so we are going to struggle. So let's just jump straight into qualifying and let's see what we can do. You're probably looking for a 156 in here in quali, uh, 155 in practice it would be really, really quick. But uh, yeah, I'll be aiming for a 156 if I can. So going through turn one and turn two, absolutely deadly. If you outbreak yourself, you'll go into the gravel and that will be your qualifying over with straight away before it has barely begun. Right going through the Suzuka S's then absolutely awesome set of corners feels really really nice when you get it right I got it wrong there actually I got a little bit too a uh, little bit too deep uh, and had to lose some speed to get back on the exit we'll get some speed for the exit of the corner and I'm in real danger of losing the slip of the Audi straight away as we go through Degna curve and go through turn nine under the bridge still just a little bit too far away I think to get that slip so that is going to cost us a tenth or two every straight that we're not in the slip nice nice entry and a lovely exit actually coming out of the hairpin turn 11 and I reckon we're just just about there now but it's such a big distance that we lose it because the guy in the Audi has the slipstream of Winchy up ahead so it doesn't last for too long okay going to the spoon curve then Turn 14, so easy to get on the power too early, drift out wide, touch too much of the green stuff, um, and then your lap is once again ruined. But we're on the back straight now, uh, What right before... I'm gonna, 130R is now, please tell me I've got that right. Chat, little chat. <laughs> if anyone's watching this afterwards and I've said that wrong, please just absolutely rinse me. You've got, you've got my permission. It's absolutely fine. Okay, breaking just before the 100 metre board, going through this final chicane here. You can absolutely take the mick with the last corner there. As long as you've got a wheel on the kerb, you are fine. Back in the slipstream range here, and we are going to cross the line with our one and only attempt with the 57-2. Not too bad. Um, two and a bit attempts off, really, getting to 56. His pole time was a 56-7, so about a half second off. Not bad, considering we didn't have the slip, and we are definitely in the car that is slower than everyone else. Okay then, it is time for the race. You can see straight away I've put the fuel mixture on six. So to basically introduce this race, uh, you need to use all three tyre compounds. So you need to use soft, mediums and hards. And you will need to do some fuel saving, which is kind of cool. I always like when races have a little bit of fuel saving. Um, started at the worst possible point in the track, really, right on the chicane. Um, it's not where you want to be. And yeah, you can actually see, look at the gap there between myself and uh, P12, that's huge. So I imagine uh, they had a little bit of an accident at the start, I should say, because that is bigger than usual. Okay, going through the first corner, you've got to be careful because you're on cold tyres, but these two chaps in front of me were not careful enough, and they have gone off wide, and I've just, just got enough room there to sneak past E. Monaco, the man from Belgium, and we have moved up into ninth place. Lovely stuff. Okay, so I have decided... Well, I say decided, I forgot... Uh, if I'm being honest, I've decided to start on the soft tyres. I think the recommended strategy, if you're starting in the middle, um, like I was, is either start on the hards, 
or start on the mediums. Um, you know, if you start on the soft tyres, you need to make progress, progress quick, and you won't get too far in terms of taking advantage of being on the soft tyres because, it, it, you know, you're in traffic and you've got a full tank. So we won't be as quick as we should be. I probably should have started on the hards, to be honest, or the medium. So it just means that as we go through the hairpin here, we are going to have to be lightning fast and try and catch up with the boys and girls up ahead. So on the back of Lawrence then, you can really see the pace advantage on the straights in that GTR. It's still a bit of a beast in the straight lines. We get ourselves ready for turn 13 and potentially looking for a move if there is a gap. We're going to go, okay, there's a gap there. We're going to go for that there. And that is just, that's just poor for me. That is, I'm, uh, Lawrence, if you're watching, mate, that was so poor for me. I, 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 that's a shocker. I hold my hands up on that one. Now, thankfully, I, if you if you keep watching, I do actually pay him back slightly later on in the race. So fingers crossed. Well, I say fingers crossed. Luckily, that didn't actually ruin his race too much, and he was able to get back up to pace. And I didn't ruin his race. I felt so guilty uh, during that. I saw I saw a gap. I went for it, but it wasn't really on. Um, as two chaps go into the pit there, Wind and AGT, they did the right thing. They started on the hard tyres. You only want to spend about one lap on the hard tyres for switching to the medium. So we're going through the Suzuki S's once more. Oscar, who was very, very quick actually, I have to say, uh, in this round, in the GTR, has a little bit of an off moment there and goes wide and dips onto the gravel and that was it. Okay, start of lap three then. You can see he's got the pace, he flashes me and say, I'm going for the move, Ollie, and I am more than compliant because there's no point, he's got the pace on me. Let's stick behind him, uh, use that slip, use the suck and maybe we can suck a little bit more fuel into the tank. Well, I say suck more in, we just need to save a bit more fuel. So we go to lap four now, where we've managed to stick with Oscar, and we've caught up with second, uh, no, second, third, third and fourth quite quickly. Now, Oscar's going to go for a nice move around the outside, and he's managed to get both of them, which is absolutely mega. Uh, I try and follow him here, I lose the slip, I lose the suck, and I'm on the inside of this corner, actually as we go into the Degna Curve, and I actually managed to get myself up to P5, which is absolutely awesome. I do look for a move on the inside here uh, as I go right, but then his car just it gets a bit of oversteer and then just slams back to the right-hand side of the track, and there's nothing I could do. little sneaky move up the inside of the hairpin. I do get better traction, but unfortunately, it's just not enough, and we're going to be around, we're going to be wide around this corner. We're going to be on the outside, I should say, and we, yeah, we just don't have that oomph, and that's going to drop us back down to P5. Okay, now we've got the Spaniard in front of us. This is AGT. You can see Oscar has gone off again. He's having a bit of a nightmare. He's come on, he's ghosted, and the game's on ghosting at the worst point. As soon as he's come back on, uh, the game's unghosted in there, and yeah, he does have a little bit of a, a collision, shall we say, uh, with the Spaniard in front of him. And now he's got dirty tyres, so I'm kind of all over him trying to think of where I can get a move done, but Around around the S's at Suzuka, it's pretty much impossible. And the only other place I can really get a move done here is around the outside. But Oscar, like I said earlier, he had the pace on this one. He really, really did. So end of lap sips, sips, <laughs> end of lap six. Jesus Christ! Um, he manages to get a nice little move done on the Spaniard going into chicane. Just uh, just breaks a little bit later than him, and the Spaniard is well aware and stays well out of his way. Good stuff. So lap seven then. Uh, the Spaniard decides to go in the pits. He was on the mediums. So he's done very well indeed. He's on the mediums. And I decide to go an extra lap. Just like Oscar did there. Um, I've gone for the extra lap. Now in the pits. Uh, this time I'm going to put the hards on. I could have gone for the mediums and then changed the end. But I'm going to put the hards on. Let's get them out of the way. Um, I'm not going to change fuel on this one. I'm going to change. I'm going to put fuel in for the last stop. There's no point carrying that extra fuel. Uh, we may as well just swap the fuel at the end of this stint. So we're in P4 right now um, after a pit stop. So this is looking pretty good. It's looking pretty tasty. We will have to pit again, but then I think guys in front of us will have to do it as well. The Spaniard here has got an absolutely amazing launch. He's come out of nowhere and I leave the door open and he makes a fantastic move up the inside at 130R um, and he gets the move done. And Oscar goes past me as well. Um, I saw him on the radar and just decide to uh, let him go essentially because there's no point fighting so we're both in the pits now and I'm going to have to put fuel in now the difference between myself and Oscar this time is the fact that Oscar 
actually did put the fuel in last time, so he's put it in. I'm going to have to put my fuel in this time. And you can see the difference that makes. He has just sprinted away, so there's about a gap of two and a half seconds. And he is probably just going to run away. And, yeah, we probably won't see him again. He just gets in front of uh, E. Monaco as well, the Belgian in P9. Okay, lap 11. They haven't actually sprinted away as much as I thought uh, they would. I've got Lawrence behind me. Now, I decide, like I said here, because of how much of a dick I was to him, to be honest, I've decided to let him go, and he puts his hands on to say thank you. No need to thank me, mate. As Oscar goes off once again, Oscar's got the pace, but my goodness me, he's being in the wars in this one. He is not having a clean race at all. Just, just, it's just, <laughs> just every incident seems to involve Oscar at the moment, which is, uh, it's not a good sign. It's not a good sign. Now, it looks like the Belgium uh, in P8 has got himself a two-second penalty, I believe. So there must have been contact there. I reckon uh, turn eight, the Degna curve, they must have just come together. I reckon the Belgium had the inside line, and Oscar's tried to go around the outside and. There's been a contact, Oscar's gone off, and the game has given this chap a two-second penalty. So we'll stay on board here as we're following Lawrence, or desperately trying to stay in the suck. Now this Belgian man is going to serve his penalty, and we just have enough, just slightly, um, get past him. And that should be enough for P9. Further ahead then on lap 13, you can see Lawrence is starting to sprint away now. Just do not have the pace in the Yeetel. Um, but we've actually got two people fight behind us. So you can see uh, Mario, Sonic and E Monaco are fighting ferociously behind me. Um, actually, by the way, I do have all the highlights of the penalties and incidents at the end. So make sure you stay tuned for that and we'll, uh, we'll go over them. You quite enjoyed it in the last video. So I decided to do it in this one as well. Breaking just for the 100 metre board then at the chicane. And absolutely yeeted is Mario Sonic. He, that is, that's an, that's an RIP boys. That is a F, massive F. And I can see straight away, uh, once again, E Monaco, the man from Belgium, has stopped there to let him by. And as we jump on board for lap 16, the final lap of this race, uh, we're currently in P8 after that. That incident between the two lads has given me a bit of breathing space. And we're just about going to get past uh, Brackers there. He was not interested, I don't think, in giving me the space there. <laughs> That was a little bit hairy, that. I really did think we are going to be in a bit of trouble. And the last lap 16 as well. I was a little bit conscious of fuel. I'm not... I don't I don't get scared when it comes to fuel, I, I suppose. But I've never actually run out, I don't think, in this game. But I, I'm, I'm always conscious of it. I think if I ever did run out of fuel, I'd feel like such a, a pleb or a plonker. I just wouldn't want to do it. So even though it said I had one lap remaining and we had gone through the S's or going through them, I was still a little bit... I was a little bit cautious, so you'll see I just change gear early every now and then and just uh, lift coast when I can. You can see I straight up to third gear there just again to save just save that ounce of fuel. And I was just keeping an eye on uh, brackets as well, uh, just to make sure we can get out of the slipstream range, which is, as you all know, three quarters of a second. As we come out the hairpin there, we get a massive launch. I checked back to see if he actually plebbed it. He had not. Uh, he just got a bad exit, and that should see us all the way to the end. No slipstream to worry about and we should cross the line as we go for the chicane and get ourselves a nice P8. Three positions up, not too shabby considering we started in P11 and we actually don't run out of fuel which is ideal. So yeah, crossing the line here in P8, not too shabby. There was a few incidents in this one so we're going to have to take a look back at these and see exactly what happened because it was a little bit chaotic. There's a few things that happened in this race that I didn't see, but I'm glad I looked back at because it really, really kicked off um, in some of the instances behind us. So 233 points for us. Uh, we'll take it. We'll take it. You know, it is what it is. Um, didn't take this one too seriously. So start the race then. This is what I was talking about, the German. Uh, when we look back, you can see his cold, hard tyres barely surviving the chicane. He did well, even going through the last corner there. The car wants to destroy him. Okay, this is, uh, again, the man from Belgium, E. Monaco. He goes wide and so does the Audi R8. Again, they're just, I think, on cold tyres, just break way too late. And, yeah, that is game over. Like I said, in that first corner, absolutely brutal. This is my savage move on Lawrence then, um, nearly ruining his whole race. So I'm really, really glad, actually, to be fair, that I didn't actually ruin his race. You can see... If you look behind, Ronnie is on board. You can just see there's a, just a massive yellow pleb 
and he decides to take Lawrence out. If that was me, I'd be fuming. So, yeah, that is 100% my fault. So, again, massive apologies. Okay, this was lap two then. This is Oscar the Spaniard and the guy from Belgium. So, it looks like the Spaniard has just got a load of oversteer, tries to correct it, and, um, yeah, just yeets Oscar off the track there through the Suzuka S's. And that promotes him, or demotes him, I should say, to P6. Now, this move around the outside here by Oscar was absolutely awesome. You can see, as we go into different cameras side by side, this is the space I had. And I think that was as clean as a whistle. I don't think there's much more else I could have done there in terms of how clean it could have been. And this one here, I just see it later. I see it go wide. I've tried to go to the right. Don't react quick enough. And unfortunately, could not get the move done. This is from the Spaniard as well. Goes to the right, goes to the left. Dukes me a little bit. Gets a move done going through that corner there. Fantastic stuff. Really, really good move and thoroughly deserves P4 from that. And then Oscar, a very late lunge, but a clean one. A clean one. So, yeah, nice position there. Okay, so Oscar and this chap here, we didn't see this, but this is a little coming together there um, through 130R. And, yeah, that's um, it's just a little bit unfortunate. There's never enough space there. Okay, Oscar goes off here on lap 11. Now, he's going to go for a move on the inside. Okay, Oscar's just not seen him there, I don't think. That's a tough one to call. I don't think Oscar saw him. I just don't think Oscar saw him. And, uh, yeah, he's uh, he's off again. He, he's been in the wars, Oscar, here. And then this, yeah, this is just really, really unfortunate. Instead of trying to, you know, he outbreaks himself. So hit me, I think he kind of sacrifices this chap instead, instead of myself. So I appreciate that, because that could have easily have been me. And he slows right down, does the right thing, and says, Mate, um, you, you have the position. That's absolutely fine. Um, I don't think Mario was too still too happy about it though, as he just <laughs> I don't know I don't know if he's slowing him down here. It looks like it because they're not exactly going very far. So Mario is not too pleased, and then Oscar just does this. Now I don't know what the hell Oscar did that for. <laughs> I don't know. I really don't know. And then the, this guy um, gets his own back a little bit. I don't know why he did that. I've looked back at the footage, ladies and gentlemen, and I have no idea why he reacted like that. I cannot tell you. I cannot tell you. Maybe he can tell us uh, in the comments, but it's absolutely savage, isn't it? <laughs> uh, he takes him out, and his engine and front bumper as well, um, by the looks of it. Uh, we're, in tr we're in trouble. So, uh, yeah, real, just real strange. It just, it just, I just, yeah, we look at it again. I don't know why he did it. I, d I don't know why he did it. I really don't. Um, I've raced with these chaps before. They're perfectly clean, so I don't, I don't know what... I don't know what motivated motivate them there, but there you go. Never mind, eh? But that was a good race. I really enjoyed it, and there was plenty of stuff that happened. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you did, as always, leave a like on the video, subscribe for more yeeting, and I shall see you for the next one. Take care. Ta-da.